Welcome back. In this lecture, uh, we want to first uh, uh, derive the state space modeling so that we can derive the, the discrete time model of the complete uh, you know digitally controlled DCDC converter. Because in the previous lecture we have seen that if we only analyze the current loop stability that is not sufficient and that is why we need to derive the full model. So, in this lecture we will talk about the we will recapitulate our state space modeling of buck and boost converter then we will derive the state space solution vectors and then state space solution for individual switch configuration and then what is the what are the guideline to derive complete discrete time model. So, first state space modeling of DC DC converter. So, here I will talk about uh, two like a synchronous buck as well as synchronous boost converter and this uh, you know this converter detail model we have already discussed it is a more or less practical converter with synchronous configuration. Here we are considering two state variable. The one state variable is the inductor current and another state variable is the capacitor voltage. And we are considering capacitor voltage at the state variable because we do not want the state to be discontinuous at the point of switching. That is why we are taking two state variable which are continuous because inductor current cannot change immediately neither capacitor voltage can change. And we are considering input variable which is the input voltage as well as the external load sink current. That means, if we consider another sink load current then this variable will come as the input variable, another input is the actual input voltage and there will be one more input variable which is a timing parameter that is a control like a duty ratio and here since we are initially starting with an open loop system. So, we are not considering the control variable at this point of time. So, we want to first derive the state space model for different switch configuration and we want to get the complete solution. So, if you take the state space model of a DC DC converter from the previous diagram, if this switch is on then this path will be on and this path will be off. So, you will get one set of configuration. Similarly, for this converter if this switch is on it will be connected and this path will be disconnected. So, you will get two separate system one is this inductor loop and this is the this loop, but on this switch is off and this switch is on then the current will flow in this path. So, depending upon the switch configuration you will get two different state space equation and this kind of equations are called switch linear system. That means, for each subsystems are linear, but there is a switching in between. So, that means, that is why you are writing a q and b q for each of these switch configuration for q equal to so, what value of q can take? q can either take 1 or 0 if the high side or I will say controllable MOSFET is on because the controllable MOSFET means if the controllable MOSFET is on. Okay, and it is the if the controllable MOSFET is off and we are not talking about discontinuous conduction mode. So, it is under CCM. Okay. So, here it is a compact form for a buck converter where this is for a buck converter yes. That means, what is alpha? Alpha equal to R by R plus R C. R is the load resistance, this is the load resistance. and this is the ESR of the capacitor. Okay. So, you will find for the buck converter A matrix is independent of Q provided that the two on state resistance are identical. That means, if I take R 1 and R 2 identical that means, if we take R 1 equal to R 2 equal to R then this A matrix will be exactly same. And what is R e? So, we are taking R 1 equal to R 2 equal to R the same thing. Okay. 
So, here you can take R or R1 whatever, but if they are different then there will be a switching term. Otherwise A matrix and they are more or less close. So, A matrix is almost uh, identical for both switching configuration, but you will get a drastically or fundamental different in the B matrix. What will happen of the B matrix if the switch is on this term will be non zero it is 1 by L and if it is uh, switch is off it will be 0. That means, in the buck converter if you see the input voltage either connected when the switch is on or it is disconnected and that will make a completely different B matrix for the buck converter. Similarly, if you go to boost converter you see the input voltage is always connected in CCM. So, you will see the B matrix will not have such fundamentally different equation associated to the input voltage, but B matrix for the buck converter is fundamentally different the term associated with the input voltage, but in boost converter A matrix will be different. That means, if you go to the boost converter and you will get the detailed derivation in lecture number 26. So, if you take the boost converter you see A matrix is heavily dependent on Q that means, if Q equal to 1 this terms are 0, this term is 0 and if the Q equal to 0 this terms are R is coming into picture, but this is the term associated with the input voltage which is always common, but the term associated with the load current will also have a different because load will be connected or disconnected for which configuration that we have to see. Load is always connected, but I am saying that this first term will have a DIL DT term right. So, whether DIL DT will be linked to the load current that will not happen in mode 1 because the mode 1 in a boost converter you will see the input voltage inductor resistance you know there will be a resistance it will be it will be like this. So, inductor is disconnected from the capacitor side. So, this term will be 0, but in the second time second mode DIL DT will flow in this path. So, then it will be connected. And this will make the boost converter because we know this uh, connecting and disconnecting of this mode 1 and mode 2 and in a you know kind of a because when the inductor can rise then capacitor voltage will fall and that behavior will make the boost converter have a unique property of called non minimum phase and that will lead to right up plane 0 and that is why this is an indirect power converter because it first takes the energy and then give back to the source and that will make the boost converter control is very difficult. And this is also you can get it in lecture number 26. Now, how to get the solution of state vector? So, any state vector solution in general form can be written like this and this is a very standard textbook you know if you go to any control system state space analysis this is a very standard technique and this state solution will depends on the AQ. So, if AQ and BQ changes then this equation solution will be different and the first term is called zero input response because if you do not apply any input then the response due to the initial condition is 0 input response. The second term if you take the initial condition to be 0 then it will be the response due to the that means, if you if you apply a input signal then the 0 state response ok. Sometimes this is called homogeneous solution this is called particular integral and this is also sometimes known as unforced response and this is a force response and this can be also shown that this is a convolution of this input with the you know uh, this particular matrix. So, there are different interpretation, but the bottom line is this 0 input response and 0 state response, but this term is easy to handle, but this term is the one which actually is somewhat difficult because how to get the solution. So, generally if we consider a DC DC converter this U term what is what? So, we took U term to be two term one is input voltage another is the load current right. So, in general the input voltage is constant for the all the cycles if you do not consider any small variation of the input voltage and we also consider the sink current is constant because it is a constant current sink. So, that means these two variables are considered to be constant. So, this term is constant for this whole duration. So, you can take u. So, you can simplify this term by taking out u of tau it is a constant 
and just take the integral for the rest. That means you can take this out, but the BQ will vary depending upon whether Q equal to 1 or 0. So, you are only dealing with the integral of this term. Okay? So, now this will also depends on the EQ matrix. Now, if you change the integral limit, that means we are taking any arbitrary initial condition to t. So, we want to convert into 0 to t minus t 0 and this expression will come exactly the same thing. That means, if you take 0 to t any, so it will be power a, that means 0 to t minus t 0, it will be a q t minus t 0, this is a common term and now this is the integral. If the a q matrix is invertible, then this solution can be written in the analytical form in this way. If this solution is invertible, but if this solution is not invertible, then in general if you take a practical boost, you will face this kind of difficulty in a boost converter. If you take an ideal boost converter, during mode 1, the boost converter A matrix, it can be shown for an ideal boost converter, on state matrix will be 0, 0, 0, minus 1 by RC. So, that will make the A1 matrix non-invertible and that is not very straightforward to get. But if you take a practical boost converter, then you may find that there will be some amount of ESR. Okay, that means, you will get you know, uh, there will be some ESR that means minus of ESR or some like a some offset non zero term will be there, something will be there, or you can not ESR, I would say it will be DCR. Because if you take the boost converter circuit like this, inductor resistance and then this, then what will be LDIDT? So, DILDT will be 1 by L. So, it will be V in. So, I am talking about this term minus. So, it will be if this term is R on, it will be R on into I L. So, you will get minus R on by L and the because of this term, this will be also invertible. Okay. So, overall state space solution will look like this. Okay. So, that means, if it is if it is non-invertible, there are way to handle that, but we are not discussing in this course. So, overall discrete time model look like this. Now, we want to get this solution vector for different switch configuration for various converter. So, mode 1, it will be A1, mode 2, B2, switch off and for a buck converter, mode 1 equation I told you. So, they are identical if R1, R2 are same, that means on state resistance of the two switches are identical, then you will get same, but you will get different B matrix that we also will discuss. And if we do not take any current sink, then it will be simply this term and this is a well known method. For a boost converter, A1, A2 matrix are fundamentally different. Okay? And B1, B2 matrix are different in case if you consider load sink, uh, external sink load, but if you ignore the external sink load, then B1, B2 matrix are identical for a boost converter in continuous conduction mode. So, then how to get the discrete time model? So, you can get the solution vector which we discussed earlier, that means you know whatever we discuss here. So, this is my solution vector I can get, but this is this solution is for individual mode. So, how to get the complete solution? So, if you look at this diagram, now we want to derive the complete discrete time model. How to do that? So, we already have derived uh, for individual subsystem, that means if you take on state, this is my on state, you know, then we also know off state. Okay? So, on state and offset, off state. So, the on state solution will start with the initial condition that means this is my nth cycle and this will be my n plus 1th cycle. So, during this nth cycle, we will start with the initial condition which consists of this inductor current output voltage. Similarly, you can get the capacitor voltage initial current and we want to so intermediate variable condition then use the solution. So, on state solution you can get if this time you will get I L 1 if this time you will get V 0 1, 
then next place you can go then i l n plus 1 will be a function of i l dash and then v 0 dash then you can get the complete solution x n plus 1 over a switching cycle. So, this is just the steps and that will continue in the next lecture. So, in summary we have discussed state space modeling of buck and boost converter, state space solution vectors, state space solution for individual switch configuration and guidelines for deriving discrete time modeling of switch mode power converters. So, in the next lecture we will derive the complete discrete time model of DC-DC converter under digital control. I want to finish it here. Thank you very much.